This week, we all celebrated Earth Day, and as part of the celebrations, the White House put out a press release titled, On Earth Day, We Finally Have a President Who Follows Science. I was actually in a rehearsal when this press release came out, and being in a quiet room with lots of other people was the only reason why I didn't immediately react by saying, What the f is this? Incidentally, uh, if you'd like to hear Lauritsen's Chanson de Rose and a bunch of romantic springtime music, then, uh, this is the place to be on the 7th of June. Now, this isn't the video I was planning on making this week. That, that's been pushed to next month. You'll have to find out what that is. But I had to make this because when I read this press release, I felt like I, I kind of lost my mind. <laughs> and in discussing this press release, I think it's important to treat the administration's environmental policies with the sincerity that they deserve. So let's start here at the top. Normally in these kinds of press releases, you'll have something like, climate change is the defining issue of our times, or climate change represents an existential threat to the planet. And I think it's interesting that that doesn't happen here. It's interesting that if you control F on this, no mentions of the word climate. None. And uh, that's just worth bearing in mind as we go forwards. Okay, here are the key actions President Trump is taking on the environment. Firstly, promoting energy innovation for a healthier future. By supporting cutting edge technologies like carbon capture and storage, nuclear energy, and next generation geothermal, the Trump administration is ensuring America leads in both energy production and environmental innovation, producing the cleanest energy in the world. Now, remember what I said about how this doesn't mention climate change anywhere, right? And yet they are, saying we want clean energy, and specifically they want carbon capture and storage, a technology that is only relevant when it comes to climate change. Moreover, it is pretty universally regarded as a bad solution that only benefits the status quo. What they are saying at the very top is we are gonna plow our money into this bad solution to a problem that we actually don't even acknowledge exists. And then they go on to say that by ending the Biden era pause on liquefied natural gas export, the US is sharing cleaner energy with allies, reducing global emissions and creating American jobs. Studies have shown that expanding liquefied natural gas exports is incompatible with reducing emissions. If you expand the export, you are going to be increasing emissions and is basically incompatible with keeping things below two degrees. Like we already have enough fossil fuel supply. We don't need to expand it, we need to be contracting it. But of course, that's only a problem if you think that climate change is real, which, you know, these guys don't. Also strange that they mentioned that the US led the world in greenhouse gas emission reductions in President Trump's first term. There's a link. Under President Trump, the United States continued to lead the world in greenhouse gas emissions reductions, cutting energy-related CO2 emissions by 12% from 2005 to 2018. I don't know if you remember what year President Trump was elected. Can we please just pop that on screen right now? So now back in the press release, we're into the next section. President Trump is championing sound forest management. By streamlining regulations and expanding responsible logging, Trump is safeguarding millions of acres of forest land, improving wildlife habitats, and supporting rural economies at the same time. Now I will absolutely concede I'm far from an expert when it comes to logging, so I just did a quick search to see what actual scientists in this field are saying. And uh, in response to this part of Trump's administration, they have said that um, it's very charitable, actually. They say it may only work in some places. Opening up huge areas of the country to logging is not something that neither I nor the experts in this field seem to think would actually produce ecological benefits. <laughs> oh. Oh God, this one. President Trump is ending the forced use of paper straws. According to a new report, paper straws contain dangerous PFAS chemicals, known as forever chemicals, linked to significant long-term health conditions that infiltrate the water supply. You know what else has forever chemicals that infiltrate the water supply? Plastics! Actions like pausing restrictive emission rules for coal plants and revising the National Environmental Policy Act implementation have accelerated responsible energy and infrastructure projects while maintaining rigorous environmental standards. They've literally repealed a bunch of air and water standards from the EPA. They call it the greatest day of deregulation in American history. Can we just put the definition of double think on the screen, please? Yeah. It's that, it, it's that. This section then goes on to say that removing uh, restrictive emission rules for coal plants while maintaining environmental standards allows American families to save money and proves that a strong economy and healthy environment go hand in hand. Finally, something we agree on. That last bit, I mean, good grief. I, I can get on board with that, but you know what else saves people thousands on energy bills? Cheaper energy through renewable means that also benefits energy security. 
President Trump is protecting public lands. By opening more federal lands and waters for oil, gas, and critical mineral extraction, the US is strengthening energy security and reducing reliance on foreign resources. So just so I, I get this straight, they are they are protecting public lands by digging the <laughs> out of it. <laughs> President Trump is pushing back on unfair trade practices that harm the environment and undercut US producers and exporters. Deforestation in Brazil is at a 15 year high. Now, I, can't, I literally can't believe this one. They provide a citation for this. If we click the citation, it takes you to a tweet. Deforestation reached a 15 year high in 2021, driven by weak environmental regulations. You know what? We can verify that. In 2021, deforestation did reach a relative high, but that was in 2021. Do you know what's happened since 2021? Deforestation has massively reduced in Brazil. In fact, it's gone down by close to 50%. China is responsible for the most ocean plastic pollution per year with an estimated 2.4 million tons, about 30% of the global total. Oh, actually a source. Good grief. They can, they, they can do it. Oh my God. I didn't even notice that one the first time around. The article is from 2015. They found an article that said, China's the worst at something, and then they ran with it. They didn't bother checking that it was 10 years old. The more up-to-date data, I've, I've seen conflicting things with, with a quick search. It's it's sort of India or, or China um, as being the largest producer. I suspect that what's happening here is it depends on which metric you're using, like where you actually measure it. You know, are you doing floating plastic? Are you doing plastic of a certain size? Are you measuring it in rivers? There's a lot of different ways that you can measure this, to be fair. It is worth also noting at this point that they previously just talked about bringing back plastic straws. So while they are saying China bad because it produces a lot of plastic pollution, which, you know, I'm not going to disagree with that, they are saying we're going to fix this by making more plastic pollution ourselves. I also read that one of the unintended consequences of the tariffs that Trump brought in is that because it's more expensive to import aluminium, Coca-Cola is now going to produce fewer recyclable aluminium cans and start producing more plastic bottles. Oh wait, no, but it does say here that the US will lead by example with cleaner production and responsible global stewardship. Oh, so that's all fine. By pausing certain wind projects, President Trump is recognizing wind turbines detrimental environmental impact, particularly on wildlife, which often outweighs their benefits. This issue around bird fatalities and well, wildlife fatalities in general and wind turbines is, is an ongoing myth. If you ever hear a claim like this and you want to get more informed about it, a great resource is Skeptical Science, and they have a whole page specifically about this that I'd just like to quote from. Wind turbines are estimated to cause 0.3 to 0.4 avian fatalities, so bird kills, for every gigawatt hour of energy generated. Fossil fuels cause 5.2 fatalities per gigawatt hour. So being generous, that's 13 times worse. This isn't to say that wind turbines have no impact on wildlife. They do. We have data to show that they have some limited impact. The point is that it is much less than equivalent fossil fuel technologies. And this isn't even considering the climate impact, the reduction in emissions because of these technologies. I looked through this before and I, I wrote down a bunch of stuff that I wanted to talk about and I still didn't catch everything that's just really basic mistakes and clear double think and just sloppiness. Like th this is from the White House, one of the superpowers on earth. And this is how it's talking about the environment and climate change, except it doesn't mention climate change once. This was the best they could do for Earth Day. This was their best. Now it is worth noting what didn't happen on Earth Day. There was a rumor from pretty well-placed sources that the Trump administration was going to revoke the tax exempt status of a bunch of environmental organizations, which didn't happen. They actually put out a press release saying we're not considering doing that. So. Yeah, good. There was also the rumor that they were going to designate some environmental organizations like Greenpeace as terrorist organizations on Earth Day, which, I mean, maybe that was too much of a Saturday morning cartoon villain thing for even them. Uh, again, glad that didn't happen. This is another area where it's not even so much what the administration is doing that's bad, although it definitely is. It's more the uncertainty of not knowing what they're going to do next. Like I'm not certain they know what they're going to do next. That is the real killer. There's a horse loose in the hospital. No one knows what the horse is going to do next. Least of all the horse. He's never been in a hospital before. Quick quiz, what do Moka Hong Kong, Japanese woodblock prints, Snipe and Wib, and Red Letter Media all have in common? The answer is, 
I like the videos they make, and I want them to keep making videos, so I personally support them on Patreon. If you like the stuff I make and would like me to make more, then please consider supporting me on patreon.com forward slash simonoxfizz. Patrons get early access to videos and exclusive content every month, notably a behind the scenes vlog of what happens here at the studio, but also at higher tiers, patrons get their names in videos, thank you to these lovely people whose names are on screen right now, and can vote on video topics for me to cover. Please do consider checking it out, it's linked down there in the description. With a special thank you to Rabnab, Maria and Florian Römer. Look at what you're supporting. So the picture the Trump administration is painting is one of deregulation and cutting waste, putting the domestic economy first and doing the opposite of whatever Biden did, all in the aim of protecting the environment. In reality, the administration is removing lots of protections on the environment, slashing the budget of agencies whose job it is to monitor and protect the environment, and introducing new policies that will cause environmental harm, most significantly through carbon emissions. And they're doing this for three main reasons. It's what will piss off the liberals, and that's the closest thing to an identity that the MAGA movement has. It will be profitable for those people who bankrolled Trump's re-election. And it gets rid of regulations, which, as we all know, are communism. See our video on the decade we lost Earth for more about that. If you would like a comprehensive list of all the actions they are taking on climate, the Climate Backtracker project from the Sabin Center for Climate Change Law at Columbia has exactly that. But a highlights reel would include removing mentions of climate change from public websites, pretending the problem doesn't exist, laying off hundreds of employees at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, including those in Earth observation and weather prediction, expanding the production of fossil fuels, including offshore drilling for oil, pulling the US out of the Paris Climate Agreement, again, and rolling back air and water regulations expected to save some 200,000 lives, something described by Trump's new head of the Environmental Protection Agency as a dagger straight to the heart of the climate change religion. It is still far too soon to say what this administration's impact will be on American and global emissions. I mean, who knows, the looming global recession caused by their tariffs may massively reduce carbon emissions because of a downturn in economic activity. I mean. Maybe America becoming more isolationist will allow China to become the big player on the international scene, and maybe the world will start to electrify faster with cheap Chinese goods, along with, you know, all the suffering of the common person caused by the global recession. Congratulations, Agent Trump. Your mission was a success. Return to Beijing for your next assignment. But based on the laundry list I just gave you, it seems likely that American emissions will plateau, maybe increase, as a result of this administration. And if that happens, I can be very confident that it will harm Americans. In the present, especially through the repealing of air and water quality standards, and in the long term, through climate change. Though I do draw some comfort from how many Americans, you know, other than those in the White House, chose to celebrate Earth Day. There were protests and marches all over the country, many of which were explicitly anti-Trump when it comes to climate. This is a good reminder that the vast majority of Americans, 74% of them, support climate action. And, at a state level, policies designed to protect the environment and bring down emissions continue to be enacted. While there's chaos at the top, including meddling of dubious legality with that state legislation, progress does continue to be made. And that's because it makes economic sense to do so. Many clean energy systems are cheaper than fossil fueled systems, and investing in their development allows America to keep pace with the rest of the world. Failure to do so, as the administration is attempting, will leave America in the dust of Europe, and especially China. Because while Trump's efforts to cool momentum for climate legislation have been effective domestically, Internationally, the impact is much more muted. While some countries like Indonesia have started following his lead, generally, the world's just kind of carried on doing what it was doing before Trump when it comes to climate. Largely, getting on with the work because they recognize that not doing so will cost us far, far more in the long term. That's not universal, of course. There are many countries that still depend on fossil fuel economies and so prioritize short-term gain over long-term extreme pain. 
But the global clean energy transition is now inevitable. He'd be a fool to willingly turn away from the path of stability, security and opportunity that everyone else is travelling. Mark my words, this press release will be studied in years to come as the pinnacle, so far, of the Trump administration's environmental doublethink and folly. Of course, what Trump is doing is only part of the global picture. When it comes to climate news, a lot has happened this year, both bad and good, around the world. I do an annual roundup of the biggest news in climate every December, but I thought that it would be an interesting experiment to try making a partway through the year update. You know, this is what's happened so far. And that video will be available next week over on Nebula. I release all my videos early on Nebula and several videos that you can't watch anywhere else. Recent examples include my interview about climate and AI with expert Jordan Harrod, behind the scenes of my Tiny Earth video, and playing the best climate board game with climate scientists. And if you like, you could watch something else, like Webby award-winning series Jetlag, I guess, if you wanted. And you can watch all of these videos without any ads or interruptions. That's because we creators on Nebula co-own the platform, and we don't like ads. So we designed the website and the app to run on a subscription model. You pay a subscription fee, and then that fee gets divided between the creators that you watch. And the portion also finances new original content, like jet lag. And you can get 40% off an annual subscription if you go to go.nebula.tv slash simonclark, which is linked in the description and in this QR code on the screen. That's go.nebula.tv slash Simon Clark to get yourself a subscription to watch my video next week and much, much more besides. Thank you so much for watching the video to the end. I just had to get this one out into the world and oh, oh boy. And a special thank you to the folks over at the Yogs cast, especially Daff and Sophie for allowing me to borrow your clown outfit. Daff, I will get this back to you. I know you need this to play Dota. If you'd like to watch something else from me, then here's two videos I prepared earlier. If you like this one, then you know what to do by this point. Do the YouTube pleasantries, like, comment, subscribe, all that type of thing. And that just leaves me to say thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.